Hey, hey, what's up, my friend? So in today's episode, I want to talk about the truth about trading indicators, right? You know, indicators, they get a really bad rep. You know, you get stuff like, man, Rainer, you know that indicators, they are lagging, man. You shouldn't focus on indicators, right? Price action, price action is king. But here's the thing, right? The candlestick that you see on your chart, the price that you see on your chart, it's a lagging tool as well. It has already occurred after the fact. Right, the market has to close lower for the bar to be bearish, right? The market has to really move down lower. In other words, everything that you see on your chart, it's a lagging tool. So forget about the noise, you know, where you know traders say indicators are useless, it's lagging, blah blah blah. They usually say that because they don't really know how to use indicators correctly. So in today's episode, right, I want to share with you, right, the true purpose of indicators, right, and how you can use them in your trading. First thing first, number one, indicators. They can help you filter, right, for market conditions. For example, let's say you want to only buy in an uptrend. How do you kind of kind of define an uptrend? Most discretionary traders, they would use stuff like, you know, identifying higher highs and higher lows. And, and it's not wrong, but there is a subjective element to it. And this is where indicator, indicators shine because there is no subjectivity to it. Right, if RSI is at 70, it means it's, it's 70. If RSI is oversold at, let's say, 30, it's 30. There is no subjectivity to it. And one way to define the trend, you can use the RSI indicator. What you want to do is to use a 250 period RSI. That's about 250 trading days in a year. And pay attention right to the 50 mark of the RSI. Anything above 50, the market is usually in a long-term uptrend. And if the market is below RSI 50, the market is likely to be in the long-term downtrend. Why 50, right? 50 is kind of like the equilibrium level because RSI basically measures average gains to loss. So if your RSI is at 50, it means that the average gains to average loss, right, is at the same level. But if average gains is larger than average loss, that's where your RSI goes above 50, and that's where you get an uptrend. So one way you can use to identify trending market condition is to use the 250 period RSI. Anything above 50, it's a long-term uptrend, and anything below 50, it's a long-term downtrend. So that's the first thing you can use, right? RSI indicator to help you filter for different market conditions, whether uptrend or downtrend. Second thing, right, you can also use indicators, right, to serve as an entry trigger to tell you know when to enter a trade. One example is the Donchian channel. A Donchian channel helps you identify, you know, the, the by default, right, the 20-day highs and lows. Okay, and let's say, for example, you are a trend follower wanting to trade the breakout of 200 day highs. You can use the Donchian channel, set it to 200 day settings, right? And when the price breaks above the upper level of the Donchian channel, right? That's a signal that the price has break above the 200 day high and it's an entry trigger that you can use to get long. So you can see that a simple tool like the Donchian channel, right? Can help you uh, time your entries when trading breakouts. Again, very objective because we are dealing with, for example, 200 day highs, 50 day high, whatever. Okay, so second way you can use indicator is to use it to time your entries. In other words, as an entry trigger. The third way you can use to you can use indicators is to use it for your exits. Right? For example, let's say you are a trend follower, you want to write the trend. You can use a tool like moving average, for example, the 50-day moving average to use it to write the trend. This means if you are long, you will remain long until the price closes below the 50-day moving average. So you can see that the 50-day moving average can help you trail your stop loss in the market it, it can help you ride a medium term trend in the market so that's one right using moving average to exit your trade and the fourth thing right you can also use indicators to help you identify area of value so for example in a let's say in a strong trend okay it consists of you know higher highs and lows but the pullbacks they are relatively shallow it's not very steep at all because the trend is strong. So what you can do is you can use an indicator like the 20 period moving average to help you identify an area of value. This means that if the price pulls back towards the 20 period moving average, there's a good chance that, you know, uh, let's say for example, a long uptrend, right? Buying pressure could come in at around the 20 period moving average, right? To push the price up higher. So you can see that indicators, right? Different indicators, they have different purpose. And before you think that it's useless, it's lagging, right? You have to ask yourself, what is the purpose of every indicator on my chart? And in today's episode, I share with you four main purpose. Number one is to filter for market conditions. Number two, to serve as a entry trigger. Number three, to help you manage your exits, right? You know, trailing stop loss. And number four, to use it to help you identify as an area of value. Okay, so with that said, I have come towards the end of today's episode. 
If you've enjoyed it, right, hit the thumbs up button, subscribe to my YouTube channel, and I will talk to you soon.